to all, please. Um, welcome to the meeting of the Liverpool City Music Command Authority. And I kind of start by congratulating uh, the mighty Saints on winning the Super League Grand Final and becoming champions. And I'm sure Councillor Baines would um, second that um, to the committee um, and inform the President's uh, people in the chamber that the meeting will be broadcast live. Um, over the Command Authority website, and it will be available for subsequent viewing. By entering this room, you're consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for filming purposes. Um, and we also ask members and officers to ensure you uh, press the microphone before speaking and in turn, press it again to turn it off afterwards. And finally, can everyone ensure that their phones switch to silent, please? Items 9, 10 and 12 contain exempt appendices due to the information relating to the financial or business affairs of a person or persons. Therefore, if we wish to discuss the content of these appendices, Louise will guide us through what we need to do at that time. Now before we start, um, it is with great sadness that we've heard the sad passing of the former leader of Warrington Council. Um, Councillor Terry O'Neill, uh, representing Warrington as an associate member of the Combined Authority. So on behalf of the Combined Authority and friends and colleagues right the way across the six districts, can I offer our sincere condolences to Terry's family and friends. And can I ask you all to join me in a, mil in a, in a minute of silence in respect of the sad passing of our colleague. Um, as this is our last meeting before Amendment Sunday, um, and I know this is unusual after observing them in silence to uh, tell you sad passing, but I think it would be appropriate if I ask that we observe also a minute silence for, to remember those who lost their lives during conflicts, um, not just during the First and Second World War, but those who said on active service. Um, in conflicts since, and for their sacrifice on behalf of all of us to keep us all safe. And I think, again, if we can stand to observe and then stand. One's apologies for absence, uh, Trudy. Thank you, Chair. I've received apologies from Councillor Mayor, Mayor Anderson, um, C. Hammond, Jane Kennedy, Councillor Thomas, Councillor Grofford, Councillor Powell, Councillor Ward, Councillor Sinnott, Councillor.
Sir Nicholas, Lynn Morris, and Barbara Spicer. Any apologies to add? No, okay, item two is declaration of interest. Um, three is the minutes of the previous meeting of the combined authority on the 4th of October 2019, and they are included in pages 1 to 10. I can ask that they are to an accurate uh, record. Um, item four is um, mail announcements, and I have to start on a somewhat somber note. Um, Fortunately, I'm sure everyone will have um, heard the, the sad news about the events over the last few nights. And again, I'm sure that everyone will join us in praising our emergency service who have carried out their duties um, with distinction, uh, despite some of the provocation that has been meted out, faced with a, a barrage of disrespectful, disreputable um, behaviour by people and groups on what is apocryphally called a mischief night. It's not mischief, it is acts of criminal damage and I think we'll all agree that we hope the full force of the law is meted out to prevent recurrences of this in the future. And our thoughts and prayers, I'm sure, also go to the 12 year old girl who was knocked down whilst out trick or treating last night after the car had shot at someone in Croxeth and may those individuals also be brought to book um, and take um, this type of behaviour off our streets. In better news, um, people will be aware of the deposited talks with the RMT and they have continued over the last few weeks. Um, you'll have noticed that there's been no industrial action planned over the Christmas now. Those um, threats of those strikes have been uh, removed, meaning that we've nearly had 18 months without any industrial action and a deal is in sight for all parties. Um, it's meant that um, before the year is out, we're, we're hoping that we can get something signed so that we can look forward to the arrival of our brand new trains, 460 million pounds worth brand new rolling stock, and with a guard on every train carrying out a second safety critical role. On the Northern Rail debacle, I've always supported the RMT union in their dispute about the need for a guard certainly on intercity services where often there are long distances between stations, many of them are properly staffed or staffed at all and there are other um, implications for people feeling unsafe and uh, hopefully that will resolve uh, come to a resolution soon. I've also met with Northern Rail executives since our last meeting, it says in the minutes that we were going to do this, we did do it and uh, we discussed the deteriorating service that they still uh, provided to customers despite some assurances that they'd improve. But I left them on behalf of the combined authority and the many people who write to us all as politicians that I'm on the side of customers, passengers, who were rightly fed up with cancellations, with delays, with short forming you know, trains coming in um, without the carriages that they should have so that people can't get on and off them. They've, um, I think, had enough. In fact, the uh, the amount of stuff on social media is enough is enough, and uh, I'm still um, convinced that the only way that train companies will respond is to remove them from their franchise. A couple of weeks ago, um, and amongst other people, myself and and councillor Liam Robinson got on our bikes to encourage people to consider cycling as a more healthy, environmentally friendly means of travel in their daily lives. Um, I've just noticed that uh, Councillor uh, Lord Robinson Collins is also um, on, on that bike ride. Um, what we're trying to do is a 600 kilometre walking and cycling network which will span the length of the city region. And despite the fact that I thoroughly enjoyed myself, um, although it was slightly inclement uh, to say the least, and some of us stayed on our bikes longer than others, um, it was pleasing on that day to announce that after much work by Council Robinson that Sam O'Brien has agreed to become uh, our cycling commissioner and cycling um, is really key to, to Simon. He's a local lad who's passionate about all things bike and I can't think of anybody better than him to fulfil that role. So on behalf of the uh, command authority I think we all wish him luck in his endeavours. Last week we announced 
that by working with Power to Change, we've established a £5 million social innovation fund to help grow our socially responsible business sector, um, helping us to create genuine inclusive economic growth. And there's already some fantastic community businesses across the city region. Um, people I know of home base in the constituency I used to represent in Anfield. And they've got national recognition. So we want to see this fund help those type of businesses and to grow the sector even further. Um, I attended MIPM in London and the Smart Tomorrow event with Councillor Powell Hill, two uh, really good opportunities for us to show what we're doing um, in the city region that is over and above, I think, anywhere else in the whole country. And I travelled down to London as part of uh, a series of monthly meetings with government. I met with uh, Grant Shapps, the Transport Secretary, and Simon Clark, who is the ex Secretary to the Treasury. Now, again, on behalf of um, the Combined Authority, I've pressed Grant Shapps to withdraw Northern's franchise. Uh, we've been doing this for since May or, or before. And uh, I said then, what we need is at least an operator of last resort uh, to really address these concerns. But I also pressed the Treasury Minister for the fair settlement for the Liverpool City Region in the autumn budget, um, supposed autumn budget, uh, with funding to carry out some of our most ambitious projects. However, given that there's now a general election that's being called, we're probably not going to have any budget of any sort until we, in the new year, but we'll continue to work on that. I have a whole series of community days and we went out uh, across the city and region meeting groups of businesses, volunteering community organisations, trade unions and people in the groups. <coughs> so just this month we went to Halton where uh, myself and uh, Councillor Powell Hill looked at our proposed Runcorn Station quarter and we met with a group from Unlock Runcorn and these two projects could be transformational for the future of Halton. In Wirral where we met with social enterprises such as Make Hamilton Square and the Bairn Avenue Trust that plan to reopen the Bairn Avenue Baths and run with it as a business and an enterprise for the community. I went to Nosley and visited the proposed site for the new Headboat Lane station in Fairley. Um, going back to where I grew up to as a kid, in fact it's right opposite uh, where my old junior's primary school, okay, primary school was. Um, and we want to see that area thrive again. We went to Waves in Edge Hill and I went to Simon Link, a fantastic uh, business and, and charity who do some unbelievable things. We went to the Williams and Tunnels, I don't know if people have taken the opportunity to go there, but they are it's quite amazing that these things have been constructed. And a, a company called Nutritia, this is a, a fantastic local business who have been operating in Liverpool for almost a hundred years and they export their specialist projects, products to 55 countries including to America and it again it's another success story. Hopefully people will have seen from today's agenda that we're due to approve our housing strategy at this meeting. And as you'll have seen in the press, we're calling on national government in London, whoever that might be after the 12th of December, to allocate £200 million to the electricity region for brownfield remediation. And look, we, we, all, I think we all agree and believe that this money can unlock potential developments and they could see 42,000 homes being developed on previously unused brownfield land across our six local authority areas. And that really would deliver on our brownfield first aspirations. And just finally, uh, colleagues, I think we'll all be supporting the GMB union uh, in their campaign in regard to, as the workers have been told, that they will be sacked tomorrow if they don't sign up to a, a punishing new contract which has worse terms and conditions in it than they currently uh, employ. And I think we'd all agree that's an absolutely appalling way to treat a loyal workforce. And I urge as they're even at this late stage, uh, to do the right thing, uh, abolish these predictive plans and take away the threat of sacking loyal workers. Um, on item five, we've got a constitution update, and uh, Louise is going to take us to this report. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd just like to propose two amendments to 
through the recommendations, they <coughs> see we adding all portfolio holders to the end of the recommendation as the um, changes in relation to the project may affect more and more, more than one portfolio holder. And also request that item D be deferred at the request of the St Helens officers. And other than that, I'm happy to take any questions. I hope the report is self-explanatory. Any questions? Um, can we therefore agree the um, slight amendments, but also the recommendation are set out on page 11, apart from a D, which will be deferred till a future meeting of the combined authority. Is that agreed? Agreed. Six is the uh, report that sets out the results of the external orders of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority's annual accounts for 2018-19. And Sarah Johnson, who's the Assistant Director of Finance, will take us through that report. Thank you, Chair. Um, this report by members of the committee with the Combined Authority's final accounts for 2018-19 together with the audit completion report from our external auditors and bazaars. Members will recall that a draft set of accounts and audit completion report were presented to them for consideration at the July meeting, and the draft audit completion report detailed at the time that the audit was ongoing due to an outstanding issue, um, but subject to that being resolved, they anticipated issuing an unqualified opinion without modification in respect to the statement of accounts. The issue has now been resolved and the audit is now complete. So attached to this report are the final set of accounts for the combined authority, the draft audit completion report, and a letter from our external auditors, Ms. Arles, which details the closure of the audit, the resolution of the issue, and effectively confirms the qualified opinion. Unfortunately, due to commitments, the auditors are unable to attend this meeting, but I'm happy to take any questions that they may have. Are there any questions? It's great that it's a bill of health. Uh, can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 15 of the report, please? Seven is a report that seeks our approval to accept uh, £5,869,094 of EU funding and to extend the Liverpool City Region European Social Fund Ways to Work programme. Um, are there any questions on do we want some more money? Now, great, okay. Uh, therefore, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 179, please? Eight is a report that sets out the draft housing statement and the delivery plan for 2019 to 2024, and Councillor Morgan is going to take us through that report. Thank you, Chair. The housing statement and delivery plan set out in the local cities region housing ambitions for the next five years. In preparing this, the combined authority has worked closely with all of the local authorities as well as with Homes England and the Mayoral Advisor. This demonstrates two true collaborative working amongst partners across the city region. As a result, the statement reflects the work of the city region's local plans. It is an ambitious and accelerating delivery of homes that are needed locally in order to support growth and meet the housing need. And in this is across all types, tenures and affordable price points. The statement doesn't just focus on the supply of new homes, it also recognises the need to improve the condition, quality and accessibility of many of our existing homes and the need to regenerate the neighbourhoods of which are of, of poor quality where the homes are located. Improving the quality of our homes will improve health, reduce fuel, fuel poverty and as a key element in reducing carbon emissions and addressing climate change. The statements are supported by a delivery plan with key, key actions for local authorities and the combined authority, alongside our partners at Old England, the South Housing Associations and private house builders. Delivery of this work will be coordinated through the Housing and Spatial Planning Advisory Board and I'm happy to recommend the report today, Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions to Councillor Haggard? Thanks, Chair. Just following on from that, a bit of uh, great news on, on the Widow. We've unlocked £6 million in uh, if funding uh, for Widow Waters, which of course is one of the biggest brownfield sites in, 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 in the northwest. Uh, so it's great, great news. I look forward to the delivery of thousands of units on site. And I have to say as well, it's also great news about the new way of working, which has unlocked this, because the dynamics have changed, not least with Homes England, 
this combined authority uh, and ourselves and other partners, which has made a big difference to this. Uh, and long may it continue. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Um, just like the excellent work of our finance team in getting our accounts, um, a clean bill of health and um, finalised, can I thank, on behalf of uh, Councillor Morgan himself, our housing team and associate um, other teams who have progressed this issue um, so quickly over the last few months. It's uh, a really good example of six local authority areas working together collaboratively. To, um, to try and get the, uh, um, the benefits of agglomeration. Um, can we agree the recommendations at, set out on page 183, yeah, please? Uh, nine is a report that seeks approval to provide grant support to scale up the Agent Academy Social Enterprise Programme, and that, that's a programme that supports 16 to 25 year olds to gain skills to begin their careers in digital, creative, and the tech industries. And Councillor Happy, if you want to take us through this report. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Agents Academy is a spin off from Agents Marketing Limited, a successful marketing consultant <coughs> based in the Baltic Triangle. Chair, it helps young people, as you rightly said, from less uh, advantaged backgrounds into good jobs in the digital and creative um, in the industries. It takes groups onto a 12-week program uh, with training and real work experience with more than 90% of finishers finding a full-time role, which I think that's, that's a, really, uh, a really, really good sign of, of, of a good program. The project itself, Chair, um, writes 700k to expand this successful program uh, with ambitions to expand from Liverpool's Baltic Triangle to Wirral and St Helens it has an excellent benefit cost ratio of 14 to 1. It's all about is there not inclusive growth. Our £75 million SME growth programme is not only helping businesses to grow, but it's also helping our residents to find work in these growing businesses. We have a long term vision, of course, of inclusiveness and well being for our area, and I recommend this report, Chair. Any questions, Councillor I mean, this, this just fits and dovetails nicely into our strategy about growth sectors and certainly um, the likes of digital, creative and tech are growth sectors of the future. Um, so can we agree the recommendations therefore on page 1215? 10 is a report that seeks approval to award strategic investment funding to support a number of light industrial floor space developments across the city region and again this falls in the council I have its portfolio. Yeah. Thanks Chair. Uh, this this programme offers as you said a grant funding for full speculative workshop or workspace developments across our city region. <coughs> the total commis commitment is four point one million pounds including contingency for developments in North Liverpool, St Helens, Wirral and Nosley. We will develop a total of approximately 235k square feet of light industrial space. The kind our local engineers, medical manufacturers or event companies might need. Uh, our aspiration is that once completed, they become home to growing businesses across our patch. Uh, finally, the individual projects share um, offer a high benefit cost ratio of up to 6 to 1 and up to 100 net jobs. Again, I recommend this report, Chair. Any questions for Councillor Hack? Okay, can we agree the recommendations as set out on page 255, please? 11, uh, and I think people will recall at the meeting on the 8th of March uh, this year, we established the Liverpool City Region Urban Development Fund, and this report builds on from that, they're seeking approval to appoint combined authority officers to the Liverpool City Region Urban Development Fund. Um, are there any questions? Now, therefore, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 301, please? Mm -hmm. Item 12 is a report which is seeking approval to grant support to the Manufacturing Technology Centre of up to £14,950,000. <coughs> and with this grant support, what's called the MTC, are looking to expand its facilities and create 
more than 40 high skilled jobs. And Councillor Hackett will take us through this report. Thanks, Chair. I mean, th this is a coup for the Liverpool City League, without a doubt. We're already a national league, though, we're not in the advanced manufacturing with renowned programmes like LCR4, for world class businesses like Unilever and AstraZeneca, and of course, on my own factory, uh, um, in World Unilever's own uh, location in Port Sunlight, uh, which is a global research, of course, and development centre. This project, Chair, will further boost our advanced manufacturers. It is a £15 million commitment to the Manufacturing Technology Centre. Uh, the money is for a rapidly reconfigurable factory environment in, in Liverpool Science Park and a digital SAM pit in SciTech Daresbury. Both elements, Chair, will help our companies grow and be, become more productive. Chair, besides the benefits to companies, we're pleased to have secured further cooperation with the Manufacturing Technology Centre. Since 2010, it has become a nationally significant industrial body, helping companies commercialise new technology and become more resilient. We look forward to working closely, of course, with them. The project, finally, would generate up to £50 million in benefits, and I recommend it on that basis. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, and just to, to add to what you said, Councillor Hackett, we've received uh, more than 30 letters of support from all sorts of regional and national businesses, and they believe that this project will enable them and help them with this particular partner to develop uh, their businesses further in our region, uh, leading to high quality advanced manufacturing and digital jobs, which fits into what we were saying just previously. So I'm looking forward. Uh, to be able to tell you more about the project um, at Digital Manufacturing Week. Uh, that's a nationally important industry event and it's going to be in our uh, convention centre later this month and we'll tease out um, some of what this nearly £15 million pounds worth of investment will do for us. Mark, do you want to add anything further? Yes, please. I'd just like to put some meat on the bone about why we're so excited to have this partnership with the Manufacturing Technology Centre and and what it might mean for our local businesses. If we could just thank you, and on to the next one, please. Thank you. So, um, the Manufacturing Technology Centre was established in 2010, <coughs> and by, by its own literature, it was established to, to help businesses build, build a bridge between academic research and development and industrial uses. So it was established to take, to take good ideas and to put them into industry, to put them into businesses. And the genesis of it really was looking over at our European friends and allies and seeing that the German business environment had lots of companies collaborating, the Italian business environment had lots of businesses working together and collaborating. And when you looked at the British business environment, it didn't have that. You had firms competing. So the Manufacturing Technology Centre was set up to help firms in Britain work together in a sense. And uh, you can see on the right, uh, so on the right you've got, you've got its, its targets, you have a 1.7 billion um, GBA target, 12 new businesses, new jobs, etc, etc. And that was a 10 year target. And they reached it in two years, which gives you an idea of how successful they've been and the demand there was for companies to collaborate. I want to tell you that they've gone from 40 odd employees in 2010-2011 to more than 800 today. And on the back of their success they've created a whole skills academy around the future advanced manufacturing skills. You'll understand how excited we are to be working more closely with them. So if we just jump on to the next one. This is a remarkably dense slide, but the point of it is to say that the Manufacturing Technology Centre doesn't do research, it commercialises good ideas. So if you've already got that research existing, it will help you understand how your business can benefit from it. And then on to the next one, please. And, and the project is split into two halves, so as, as Councillor Hackett said, the first part is this rapidly reconfigurable factory environment that we've also been calling factory in a box. 
this is this is a prototype part two in a box in um, in Coventry that might be coming up to meet us in digital manufacturing week. And the idea is that you can use that environment to make a single product anywhere in the world. So in our case, we're really interested in pharmaceutical manufacturing and consumer good manufacturing. So you can imagine the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine say being able to make a malaria treatment in a shipping container and sending that shipping container anywhere across the world and producing a malaria treatment all controlled from the Liverpool city region. One of our key skills, and we know from our science and innovation order and from the local industrial strategy work that, that medical manufacturing, life sciences, infectious diseases is something that we're globally good at. And this only adds to that. And the second bit that we've all um, been chuckling about is the digital sound bit. So the digital sound bit sounds funny but is deadly serious because it allows companies to create production lines and products in a digital environment and so prevent them from having to make hundreds of physical prototypes. It's a huge time and money saver. Uh, and it will further increase the volume that um, Cytec Diaspora brings to our city region. So we hope overall we think this is really, really great stuff for our, for our region's economy, but we'll also be contribute, contributing to UK PLC. Uh, and it's the next step in our partnership with a really ambitious, significant organisation.